Greetings, everyone, and I hope you're having a good afternoon. Um, I'm coming to you here from Montgomery Heart and Wellness, and today I'm going to talk to you about congestive heart failure. Now, I've done talks on congestive heart failure before. Uh, I've talked about the causes, how we treat them, and I'm going to come as, cover some of those topics today. However, today, what I want to do is give you some simple steps that you can take to combat or overcome congestive heart failure. Now, oftentimes patients come to my office as a cardiologist, been in practice for uh, more than 26 years. Uh, as an electrophysiologist, I've treated many, many patients with congestive heart failure. And oftentimes individuals come in as though they've been given a death sentence. In fact, oftentimes your physician may say you have congestive heart failure, get your affairs in order. Uh, you only have a few years to live. And the data suggests that after the diagnosis of congestive heart failure, that's if you have a heart that's pumping at, say, less than 40%, uh, the data suggests that the survival rate is about five years, say, half the people may be dead in five years. Uh, it varies. I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be that bad. So you may have been given the diagnosis of congestive heart failure, or you may have been told that you have heart disease or your heart is weak. Uh, there's some simple steps that you can take to improve your overall well-being and your overall chance of living a long, uh, fruitful life despite that diagnosis. So I want you to stick with me at the end. I'm going to give you some very, very simple steps that you can take, some simple steps that we use in my practice in treating some of the sickest heart failure patients around. Now, our patients that we see oftentimes are on infusion pumps who are given just, you know, months or days or weeks to live. Uh, I've treated patients in the hospital who've been put on hospice, and we've used these same simple techniques, natural approaches, and these patients end up walking out of the hospital. So this isn't anything that uh, I'm just making up, and also I'm going to share some of the scientific uh, evidence that we've looked at. We've published case series in the, in the medical literature. We have an upcoming case series that we're getting ready to publish, and we're looking at doing some prospective studies. So this is very solid stuff based on a long ex clinical experience and a treated patient with heart failure with all the traditional methods, as well as uh, with these natural integrative approaches I'm going to share with you today, as well as these simple steps that you may consider taking. So first and foremost, let's just get into our topic, uh, congestive heart failure keys to overcoming congestive heart failure. First and foremost, what is congestive heart failure? Now that's a term that's not really medically accurate because that term is thrown around and I'm gonna share with you when we talk about heart failure, what does it mean? But it's an illness that's just too common. Uh, it's the number one cause of morbidity and mortality uh, in our country here in the United States. Uh, and it's something that you know we need to be more aware of and have better treatments for. But generally speaking, uh, heart disease is an umbrella diagnosis when the heart does not function normally. Uh, and so we have to consider what consists of a normal functioning heart. The three areas of normal functioning heart, the heart is by and large a pump. Uh, it has four chambers, the muscular chambers, uh, and they circulate blood from the left side of the heart to the systemic circulation. That's your brain, your arms, your legs, your GI tract, etc and goes back from those areas to what's called the right side of the heart, and it circulates blood through the lungs where oxygenation occurs. And it goes around in this, this pattern on a regular basis. So you sort of have parallel circulatory systems, the systemic circulatory system, and the lungs. Uh, the heart has its own plumbing. We call it the coronary arteries. Uh, and these uh, arteries are important for supplying oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle cells. Uh, so they allow the heart to carry out its function. And, of course, the heart has its own electrical system or nervous system. Uh, and if you've ever been diagnosed with atrial fibrillation or know someone with that, that's an abnormal, uh, abnormal in the electrical system of the upper chain of the heart. Similarly, uh, ventricular arrhythmias can be abnormal in the electrical system in the lower part of the heart. So those are important parts of heart function. So how does the heart malfunction? Well, you have coronary artery disease, so those arteries that feed the heart oxygen and nutrients. If they become clogged up or suddenly become occluded, you have what's called a heart attack or you have suffocation of the heart. We call that ischemia. And the heart muscle weakens and slowly dies. 
Uh, some of the heart valves, which control circulation from one chamber to another, uh, can become abnormal, which puts abnormal stress and abnormal loads on the heart, which can cause heart disease or weakening of the heart. And of course, you can have primary electrical disorders of the heart, which again can put you in arrhythmias, which again weakens the heart due to inefficient uh, pumping and circulation of the heart. Now, primary heart muscle disease or infiltrated disease, you know, it can happen with diabetes, which causes fibrosis or scarring in the heart muscle. High blood pressure contributes to scarring of the heart muscle and causes the heart muscle to be thickened and stiff. Um, and other systemic illnesses like lupus and other autoimmune diseases, infections sometimes can cause heart disease, either through valvular disease or direct uh, uh, toxic effects on the heart muscle. And if you consume lots of alcohol, um, you can also directly damage the heart. Alcohol is a direct toxin to heart muscle. So what's uh, heart failure is not a rare problem. Uh, it's a chronic condition. But when you talk about heart failure in general, uh, and I'm not going to bore you with all the stages of heart failure, but you have what's called diastolic heart, which is a stiff heart. So the heart may have a normal pumping function, but it's stiff, so it doesn't circulate blood well because it doesn't allow adequate volume of blood to fill inside the heart chamber. Or the heart can be have systolic dysfunction. It's weak, it can be dilated and weak, so it doesn't circulate the blood out. Or it can have a combination of these two. It could be dilated, stiff, and weak. And most people have, with heart failure, have stiff and weak heart. Well, most people have diastolic dysfunction. And a large percentage of people have uh, systolic and diastolic dysfunction. So uh, in the United States, about 6.2 million people uh, have heart failure. That number is growing. Uh, nearly 400,000 deaths in 2018. I'm sure those numbers are growing. And the cost is quite expensive. So what are the standard treatments? So we in uh, cardiology and medicine in general, we have standard medications. And the medication list is growing all the time. So the new medications coming out uh, on the formulary, different uh, class of drugs, but in general, we have medications that affect different biological and biochemical pathways in the body uh, that's designed to help the heart when it's uh, weak. Uh, there are revascularization, so individuals that have coronary artery disease and the arteries are, are, are clogged or nearly obstructed. Uh, we can revascularize them to improve heart's uh, blood flow to the heart, which may improve heart function. Uh, that could be either done by bypass surgery or balloon angioplasty. Um, arrhythmias can be treated with devices, either pacemakers or defibrillators or a combination thereof. Um, ablation therapy, if you have arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation can be used, and there's some benefits in heart failure patients with that. And of course, if you have severe heart failure, uh, you may be a candidate for what's called a left ventricular assist device. It's a mechanical pump that's connected to the left ventricle that helps the left ventricle circulate, uh, or you can get a transplant. Oftentimes, the left ventricular assist device, called an LVAD, is used a bridge to a transplant, so an individual will walk around with this until you know they get a transplant uh, match. So, what is an integrated approach? You know, can we treat heart failure outside of these approaches? Oftentimes, people are looking at natural cures and natural this. There are what I call integrative approach or regenerative therapies uh, that we use successfully in our practice. Uh, we frequently integrate them with the medical approaches because oftentimes individuals can't be weaned off the medication right away, but we wean them off in a matter of days, weeks uh, with these approaches. So the first step in the foundation is optimal nutrition. Uh, we remove pro-inflammatory foods and uh, have patients consume that are anti-inflammatory. These are natural plant-based uh, nutrition, uh, nutritional uh, foods, and inflammation play a big role in heart failure. So we start on a minimally processed plant-based diet, raw fruits and vegetables, um, at least, you know, two nutritional detoxes, and they eliminate all processed foods, all processed sugars. There's certain supplements we use in a targeted fashion, uh, coenzyme Q10, if the vitamin D deficiency is there, coronary disease may uh, supplement vitamin C. The other therapies we use in our center, uh, external counterpulsation therapy, that, that's an assist device that helps the heart circulate much better. Infrared sauna, we use the infusion therapies that are very powerful, uh, ozone infusion, uh, plaquettes, sometimes chelation in patients with heart failure, 
and uh, also with um, coronary disease. So the integrative therapies and regenerative therapies that are very effective in patients with advanced heart disease, uh, infrared sauna therapy, improves nitric oxide production, uh, improves anesthesia function, improves circulation, uh, lowers blood pressure. We have to monitor patients carefully because we have to wean them off blood pressure medicine. Blood pressure goes down, reduce inflammation, uh, and it can reduce, been shown to reduce ventricular arrhythmias as well. So some of our data, we published a case series. We looked at a, a, a group of patients with heart failure who come to our clinic. And what we found is that we improved what's called stroke volume. That's the amount of blood that the heart circulates with each beat. Uh, the thickness and, and swelling of the heart went down. That's measured LV, a left ventricular mass. Uh, the, the, um, the ejection fraction went up here. Uh, the cardiac output went up here. And the stroke volume, as I mentioned earlier, improved uh, with um, this intervention. One of the patients had uh, what's called a widow maker. And in about five months, five and a half months, it went from 90% to nothing uh, with this intervention. So the coronary arteries open up uh, with this intervention. So what is this special approach? What do, if, if you, uh, what do we do with our heart failure patients who are very sick? A first step that we take with heart failure patients, we may put them on an aggressive, what I like to call is a green smoothie intervention. So here's our green smoothie uh, detox. Uh, if you've been diagnosed with congestive heart failure and you're, you know, you talk to your doctor, you may want to consider this approach, but this has been very effective. And when I say very effective, I started patients with one patient that comes to mind, she was uh, given up for hospice and she was on a mineral pump. I put on this protocol in the hospital. Uh, and we got out of the hospital in about seven days uh, with this protocol. They drink only green smoothies for the first seven to 15 days only. As the key word is only, not green smoothies plus chicken wings. Green smoothies only. It's called a green smoothie detox. Uh, the patients advanced to smoothies and salads for another 15 to 30 days. They can continue raw foods for another 30 days or add steamed veggies or veggie soups depending on the progress. Uh, they can go back to raw foods if they become symptomatic after adding some of the cooked foods. So the green smoothie detox, we aggressively detox the body. It drives out inflammation very quickly. The patient can start feeling much better in a very short period of time. If you're doing this uh, on your own, make sure you consult with your doctor. Make sure they're helping you with weaning your medications uh, because we progressively wean our patients from the medications during this detox. So what are the ingredients of the green smoothie? The key ingredients, uh, one, we recommend people using coconut water uh, or you can use a cold pressed juice. You can use uh, cucumber water, that's fresh juice, or, or some kind of a plant derived water. Uh, make sure the coconut water is not one of these processed coconut waters. Make sure it comes from the coconut shell. If you can't find good coconut water, get a cucumber and juice it, uh, uh, or some celery and juice it and make that your water base. Uh, you can use spinach chopped up, kale. One key is the blue-green algae we use. We get our blue-green algae from E3 Live. E3Live.com is where you can find it. Uh, we use a barley green grass, which is uh, freeze-dried. So these are superfoods that gives us lots of nutrients, and it helps the body uh, work more effect effectively at the cellular level. Uh, fresh frozen fruit at uh, your choice, mangoes, pineapple. You use fresh fruit and feed yourself or fresh fruit uh, that's frozen. Uh, all you use pre-soaked dates, uh, they can all be very healthy. So why are green smoothies as effective as they are? Well, heart failure patients have poor gastric absorption oftentimes. You get heart failure, your, your gut is inflamed and swollen. So you're not absorbing your medication, you're not absorbing your food. Uh, and so the um, smoothie is more easily absorbed, doesn't require as much energy to break down as solid food. So you give your body a rest from the digestive standpoint, less work or digesting the jet tract, the body can circulate blood to other places that are needed. So the bowel edema is a problem. Uh, there's decreased, decreased perfusion in the GI tract. So if you're going with a smoothie, your GI tract doesn't have to work as hard. Uh, you don't need as much perfusion. Uh, oftentimes you have a damage in what's called the microvilli of the GI tract. So absorption is decreased. So something that's more easily absorbed like a smoothie gives an advantage. And when you have these fresh greens, you're feeding the healthy microbiome, 
because typically you have a disrupted microbiome, so it helps repair uh, or replenish healthy gut flora. Uh, it's nutrient-rich, pre-digested raw foods. So the nutrient-rich, notice emphasize the algae and grasses. Those are very powerful foods. They're rich with lots of nutrients. Uh, again, they're more easy to absorb, and it provides for better intracellular hydration. Hydration needs to be inside the cells so the cells function more effectively. Um, and again, we talked about enhancing GI microbiome, and again, less metabolic demand on the GI tract, so it's less work of digestion. So these green smoothie detoxes allow the body to rest from the standpoint, from the digestion standpoint, but the body is being hydrated and nourished, and so you're getting the best of both worlds. So it allows the inflammation to be reduced, and the heart starts to function normally. So you can defeat heart failure. Don't let it... Um, uh, uh, get your spirits down if you've been diagnosed with this. This is a disease I've treated many patients who's, you know, knocking on death's door, and many of them turn around in a relatively short period of time with an aggressive nutritional intervention. So I hope you got a lot out of this. Uh, this is a, an approach that we've used uh, for quite some time in our practice, and we've had great success. So I hope this finds you uh, doing well. And uh, if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't been to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, you'll get more helpful information like this. And of course, please share this valuable information to loved ones or friends who may have had this very unfortunate uh, diagnosis. But until next time, you guys take care. Look forward to seeing you on the next show.